Hi and welcome to part 4 in the series of the assembly of this Omega 3000 here. So in the previous videos you would have seen the uh, installation of the uh, motherboard into the chassis here, um, the power supply, floppy disk drive under here, uh, hard drive installation, operating system installation and uh, today I'm going to do the go through the installation of the CD-ROM here uh, so it took me a wee while to get all this to go actually I um, I had the operating system working you know booting off the hard drive no problems there whatsoever uh, but it did take me a wee while to track down actually what type of IDE card this was and if I had looked really closely I would have seen uh, down in here that it's a a Buddha flash card. I actually uh, managed to find a picture of it on the internet and figured it out from there and uh, managed to track down a driver disk for it as well so or, or an installation disk so uh, that made things a lot easier because I was trying to uh, figure out what files were required and what lines and those uh, files that were required to actually make this work but the install disk uh, just makes all that a lot easier, does it all for you. So I'll just go through the way I've got things uh, set up here. So I've got the um, single hard drive, IDE hard drive, it's a uh, max tour, 250 gig, two, yeah 240 gig, oh, sorry, megabytes, um, plugged into the end of the IDE cable which is plugged into port 0. This is port 0 and port 1 of the Buddha here. This is the IDE uh, controller. Okay so port 0 uh, with pin 1 uh, down this side here. So I've got the red stripe leading all the way down to here. So port 0 to the hard drive and port 1 out to uh, this LG CD-ROM drive. Now, um, and it's also on the end of the cable as well. You'll see I've got a middle connector here as well for if I wanted to use um, slave devices or add another hard drive, I can do that. Anyway, um, we'll go through the uh, install disk and um, get all this up and running here. Okay, so I've booted into Workbench uh, 3.1. I uh, forgot to mention before that I've got the hard drive set to master and the CD-ROM drive set to master as well. So um, I've got a disk here, uh, the Buddha Flash IDE controller driver disk. Put that in the drive. Okay, so um, go into here. And there's an installer here. Double click the install. And I'm going to choose intermediate. Proceed. I want to do it for real. Okay, welcome. Complete installation solution. So proceed. Use HT Toolbox to partition any hard disks. Yep, we know all about that. And it's asking us where we want to put it. I'm, I've just got the single drive, single partition. Uh, so I'm going to just put it into uh, the workbench partition there. Okay, it's telling us uh, where it's installing some files there. Okay. Not sure what some of this is here. Uh, we can park the hard disk heads, I guess, um, and that's for older drives. Use bit of speed to optimize the performance of your controller. Adjust the timing from zero, the slowest, seven to the fastest. Okay. 
you can use convert drive to convert drives formatted with old controllers like Apollo AT or GBP AT and to convert drive from the shell. Okay. Uh, auto park prefs, auto parking of your hard drive. Now the find device program will launch. Okay. It's going to scan for the device there and it's found the Buddha. A, a tappy device here, select that, and this is the CD-ROM drive on the right here, also click use, and it's writing the files out, would you like the CD-ROM drive automatically mounted on boot up, yes, okay, we've got a bit of a commentary here from the cat at the moment, she wants to make an appearance, oh, there's the tail, right, Okay, um, what is the name for the DOS drive? I'll leave it as default, CD4. Proceed. Say hello. That's Molly. She's annoying. Especially when you're trying to do a video and she decides to, she wants smooges. Right, so should the CD if Yes, press utility be installed. Uh, I'm not even quite sure what that does. So I'm not going to bother installing this. Find device. I want to install the find device, it's quite handy. The Jet CD utility. Yep, cat just clicked it for me. Okay, should the play CD audio player? Yes, we'll grab that. Should the CD32 emulator? be installed. Uh, I might look into that at some stage. If you don't have an Amiga with AA slash AGA chipset, it's no point. I'm not going to bother with that at this stage. Mount. Yes. I can hear the disc spinning up. Okay, let's go. And I can see the Aminet disk that I've got in the drive. And there's the Aminet disk. Right. It's easy as that. When you've got the installer disk, uh, makes things a whole lot easier. So once I found that, I was uh, I had this sorted in, in no time, just as long as it took to do that installation after I'd uh, copied the uh, compressed file to a floppy disk. I thought while I was at it, I might have a go at uh, installing OS 3.9 since I've got that on CD. And I've got a clean install of Workbench uh, 3.1 here, so uh, we'll go through a um, uh, upgrade process while I've got the drive running. Okay, so put the disk in the drive. And there we go, we've got OS 3.9, OS version 3.9 folder, OS 3.9 installation, I guess that's the one. It's been quite a while since I've done this, so. There we go, nice yellow background there. Create emergency disk. No, don't want to. Uh, OS 3.9 update installation over 3.5. No. OS 3.9 full installation over 3.0 or empty. I'll go with that. Uh, what I would like to do is I'd like to create a floppy disk um, bootable driver to. Uh, load the drivers for the CD-ROM and install this from scratch on a brand new hard drive. Uh, I might do that in another video at some stage. Uh, click proceed. You should boot from your emergency disk to make the update or full installation. Please install the emergency disk. This program lets you install release 3.9 it can be used to upgrade an older release. 
Proceed. I'm just going to see what happens here. Software license. I'm going to read that. I'll read that later. Yeah, right. Accept. Still for real. Oh, cat's clicking the dust for me. That's not helpful. I guess I'll just select the workbench drawer. Proceed. I'm not going to bother any with any print drivers. Gmaps American, that's fine. Would you like to install the new OS 3.9 backdrops to your presets drawer? Make sure you have 10. Okay, shh. Hopefully I've got enough room for, to do this. It's not the biggest drive. I say it. It's a 240 megabyte. And that's a bit quicker than installing from floppy. <laughs> Just swapping six discs. Okay, installation is complete. Remove all discs. OK, click proceed. I'm hoping this is going to work with the Super Kickstart. Let's soon find out. OK, here we go. Here we go. Mm, not sure what that's about. Uh, this is the Buddha Speed application that was installed when I installed the um, CD-ROM drive. So you can increase the um, timing of the IDE controller, just speed up drive access. I'm just going to leave it as default at this stage. Uh, yeah, so here we go. Here's Workbench 3.9. Happy though. No. I don't like the look of those errors. Reason because I did hear the hard drive do a bit of clattering and clunking, so I suspect this hard drive might might be on the fritz. So I, yeah, could have a couple of bad sectors. Um, but I'm not sure why. I'm going to try a full reboot, uh, a cold boot, see if that makes any difference. Cannot open the resource library version 44. I guess it looks like. The resource libraries, the incorrect version. Ah, did I choose? Uh, uh, let's look. Preferences, uh, screen loaded. Yeah, some sort of versioning issue. Um, I'll look into that, but anyway, uh, there's the installation, will not be working very well. Um, so there's the uh, Amiga 3000 all put back together. Uh, now the lid that's on there at the moment um, is looking a little bit uh, sun faded there and a little bit dirty. It's not the best one I've got, it's also got a whole uh, through the top there that the previous owners put through the lid so the uh, IDE cable and the power cable can come through for the CD-ROM drive um, but I, I've got uh, about three spare um, covers so 
I've got a good one that I can use if I'm not using the CD-ROM. Um, but that, yeah, that's quite neat there. I, I might uh, keep that sitting there and use that for a little while. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, series of videos on uh, getting this classic Amiga 3000 up and running. I certainly enjoyed doing it and uh, I learnt a bit on the way. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching.